Welcome back to Spring Stitch Knits. I'm Jamie. And I'm Luke. And today we have a full episode. Today we're going to talk about the things that we're knitting, the things we have knit, the things that we might be knitting with Luke. Potentially. <laughs> so to start today, I want to introduce my newest release. This is called Poppy. It's a extra long cowl and it's meant to be worn either single under a coat or you can double it up if you're going hiking or if you need extra warmth. Uh, it's just a really fun way to play with colors. So something I just noticed real quick is if you take this cowl and you flip it in this figure eight pattern like that, yeah. <clears throat> okay, you get two holes through there, right? And you go ahead and put your leg, one leg through each hole and you got <laughs> <Stop>. underwear. <laughs> Stop it. It's probably comfortable and very soft. Oh, it's probably not. Can you imagine wearing wool? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the Poppy Cal I've already written up in a pattern and it's going to be available for purchase. And one neat thing is that if you follow us on Instagram, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for this Poppy pattern. It will include the pattern and three skeins of yarn to knit with it. Very cool. And don't forget that we do have our 500 subscriber giveaway here on our YouTube channel as well, where we have an entire bundle as well as a pattern from Jamie and some knitting accessories. So the poppy pattern is really nice. While the pattern itself looks intricate, there's never any more than two colors being knit at the same time. I always keep my floats to a minimum and it's just a really fun way to play with colors. There's no limit to what you can knit or what variant to use. You could do a color shift from this row of poppies to this row of poppies, or I chose to just keep it really simple and more monochromatic. About how long does it take to knit something like that from start to finish? It depends on how experienced the knitter is, how fast they knit, the way they knit. I actually uh, knit differently with both hands. Mm -hmm. I pick with this hand, but I flick with this hand. And it's as silly as that sounds, it's truly just because I started to learn to knit by flicking. And as we had talked about in an earlier episode, Luke converted me to a picker. So I never truly fixed that error. And so I'm, I'm, I'm constantly doing this ebb and flow when I knit. Um, yeah, I know what you mean because I pick and flick with the same hand. Come on. <laughs> You're so disgusting. Stop it. <laughs> I gotta live with him. <laughs> but um, this one, I truly, the pattern was really easy to memorize, so I zoned out. I don't know that this took me maybe uh, less than 10 hours to knit, but it really was just something fun to pick up and knit and set down and pick up again. I worked it over the course of a month, but it was kind of like an in-betweener. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough wool, and I just really had fun playing with colors. But it's, it's just a fun and easy way to knit, and the patterns are easy if you want to make it extra long or really just kind of make it a single layered cowl. It's, it's pretty fun. Very cool. Yeah. Well, something that has come up recently is that many of our new subscribers uh, prefer to crochet or have actually never tried knitting. So something that I kind of wanted to do is begin to talk a little bit about crocheting and the transition from crochet to knitting and back and forth because I do like crochet. Uh, Jamie has never really done too much of it. Uh, for me, it's a little easier. You know, you have one crochet hook on your hand there and uh, the process is kind of I don't want to call it mindless, but it's much simpler for me to do while I'm doing something else, like oh. watching a TV show. <laughs> See, I feel the opposite. Crochet, it's a right brain, left brain thing for me. I can crochet my chain, and I there are ways of provisional cast-ons, ways that you can use crochet to your advantage to knit later. And I've often used crocheting to tighten my neckline up if I have like a big, huge, boaty looking neck and I want to hike it up. But there's something in the act for me. I, I can knit Fair Isle, I can knit cables, I can knit lace. I can't wrap my brain around 
sticking the crochet needle in, wrap it, pull it out, wrap it, pull it out, pull it out again. There's just a whole... Well, you're, when you crochet, you're also adding another axis. You know, when you're knitting, you're actually just pretty much using your XYZ axes, but now you're adding a fourth axis when you're crocheting because you have to rotate your needle at times. So, you know, if your brain's not in that where it's like, a, oh, I rotate, you know, 90 degrees clockwise, pull through the hole, go back through, grab my loop, you know? So uh, I think maybe just making that adjustment is yeah. a little bit different. But coming from crochet to knitting, I will say personally, I think that knitting is a little easier. Uh, you do have two needles, but the one needle is pretty much just a holder for all of your stitches. So you're really only knitting with your right needle or left needle, depending on what you're doing. Um, but I think that coming from crochet would be a simpler transition than going from knitting to crochet. Well, on the bright side, <laughs> Since you're always ripping your knitting out at, with crochet, if you lose your needle, you'll have to pick up one yeah. stitch. Crochet is simple. Yeah, crochet to supports up. itself all the way through the chain <laughs> and the project. Knitting does not. If you drop your needles, you, all your stitches just go away. So, yeah, you have to be a little more careful there. So, have you started crocheting? Uh, I haven't been crocheting, but I did knit a project this week I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I was kind of working on this. Uh, it came out really cool. Oh, stop <laughs> it! What? Stop it! What? I got that, is your, that is your mother's blanket from like four years ago. There's cat hair! This and is not... Is I just knit this. Is this <laughs> dental floss? It's not even knit! It's a crochet... It's a crochet star pattern too, Cash. <laughs> All right, well, you I tried to pull that off for on you guys. Knitter. Yeah, so oh. I actually achieved nothing since the last <laughs> episode, but it's because I really don't have a project that I'm able to focus on or anything that I'm even interested in you, at the moment, so. <laughs> you didn't have a project for the past four episodes. Well, you know, I kind of solicited <laughs> everyone in the excuse? comments to say, what should I work on? And, and I didn't really hear anything. And consequently, I have my own projects I've been working on. As an example, I've been 3D printing. Uh, I did wind up 3D printing a crochet hook. And I will tell you, this came out pretty awesome. It is really smooth. Uh, the hook ends came out super smooth. Uh, now when you 3D print, a 3D printer runs in layers of plastic. Well, you can change how thick each one of those layers is. And so something I did for this is I made it very, very thin layers, almost layers so thin you could see through. And I, when I did that, it gave me this perfect curved rounded edge. Um, the finished surfaces on the front of this are like incredibly ironed and smooth. And so there would be nowhere for yarn to catch on it. Uh, it's an extremely smooth needle and it's good because these two flat sides actually you can hold it really well so I was excited about that it is a double ended hook and I uh, just thought it was a cool project it's actually something that came out really well you know my knitting needle gauges didn't quite come out perfect the first time so, so if it's double ended are they both the same size how do you measure a crochet because you know I know that with crochet hooks they use letters right with knitting needles they use numbers 1 through 17 but also millimeters so you have US sizes and millimeter size with crochet how do you know well what that's your not hook always size is? true because <clears throat> right here if you look I do have a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook now this is from knit picks this is one of their driftwood or whatever it is um, but basically so this this crochet hook here <clears throat> When you're crocheting with something like a 5.5 millimeter hook, this is gonna be for more of a precise project, uh, something where it is actually pretty important that you have a nice um, kind of hole size, if you will, where something like this is more for going through like an afghan, something with bigger spaces. You know, the gauge isn't as important on the needle because of the flat sides and things like that, so. Can I see this real quick? Yeah, you course. said this is, what is this? A 5.5. And maybe some of the crocheters in our audience can give us a better understanding of why we would have some crochet hooks that. with two flat sides. It works. So this is a 5.5 mm -hmm. and I stuck it through my needle gauge at a 5.5. It won't do five, it's way too big in a six. So let's check it out. All right, so it, it is an eight. And I think even with the flat sides, it would give you kind of a true eight gauge stitch. Now, consequently, because of how 3D printing works, I can scale this down by percentages and I can get it to any size you want. So I could make a whole series of these hooks. So I have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, this is square 
It's square, not square, just it's just two rounded edges and two flat sides. Well, I guess my question is, is like with your four square needles, you made a big deal about loving those. I don't like the square when I'm knitting because I find myself right on that point. Yeah. Is I it think, the same with crochet? Uh, no, I don't think so. And I think that the flat sides help you because of that turning motion. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. You're, you're, you're going like this, you're reaching over, you're grabbing the strand and then you're turning it sure. as you pull it through. So I think it just gives you a little more leverage on the needle. Sure, I got you. I like Needle, it. Needle, hook. Hook, hook. <laughs> Crochet hook. Well, since Jamie wants to pick on me and say I never knit anything, I'm gonna show you guys a few examples of some projects I have crocheted and knit that are on my Ravelry account. So you can see that I'm not making this up. One of my first finished projects that I made was actually a scarf for my daughter. It was purple and it came out really nice. It was a simple knit pearl all the way across, but I really loved that project and it kind of got me excited about scarves and other smaller projects like that. So one of the projects that I did crochet uh, was this green scarf. Uh, this was actually very, very cool. And this went to my older daughter, Ava, who I believe still wears it. Um, this was a neat project. It was easy to do. Uh, I did have to Google and YouTube some videos on some of the stitches to get myself going. Uh, but once I did, uh, I was happy. The project came out really well. And this is one of the projects that actually made me really like crochet. And you made a matching hat to go with it too. I did. I believe the hat I knit. Let's see if we can find that here. No, my dad, we gave it to my dad for Christmas, remember? Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that was that nice uh, brown and green It was wool. a hard one to give. Gosh, oh, when you yeah. spend all this time knitting, you just want to hoard it. But how, as I'm knitting a hat, how many hats can you keep? How many yeah, can you truly yeah. wear? And honestly, I don't even like to wear knit things because it's itchy. You know, a knit hat is honestly extremely itchy, especially for guys like working outside, getting sweaty, doing firewood, you know, whatever. Um, I think that, you know, just wearing a simple Carhartt, you know, is, is a little more comfortable. And you can fleece line wool and other things, uh, but yeah. that was Lion's brand, and it? If I remember, it was really soft. It was almost like um, rabbit, li rabbit fleece lined. I don't know what it was, but it was really soft. Yeah. So something that we've been doing in all of our videos is Jamie kind of touches on a little more advanced topics and some of the projects she's working on. And I sort of come in with some of the how to knit, how to cast on, how to purl, and she shows me. So if you take a look back through some of our videos, you will get some of those tidbits of intro information. Primarily, I think it's important if you want to start knitting a project to find something that you like. Go online and look at some ideas, look at some colors, look at some patterns, and find something that kind of strikes you because you'll be likely to finish that project. Once you kind of find a project, you'll learn the knitting techniques to go along with it. We'll be happy to show you here, as well as there are many other resources available on YouTube and online to help you get started with certain stitches and different patterns. So if you are one of our subscribers who is a crocheter and you're interested in knitting, feel free to ask some specific questions. And if there's something that you're looking for in terms of a tutorial on one of these videos, we will be happy to show you. If you need a more detailed explanation in terms of casting on, perhaps the knit stitch or the purl stitch, perhaps you're getting started in color work, something like that, uh, please be specific, leave a comment, and we will be happy to do an episode covering some of that information. And I'm going to include a small video on just how I work my knit stitches and purl stitches just to kind of show you how my needle works and flows through my knitting today. So with knitting, the whole point of knitting is to transfer your stitches from your left needle onto your right needle. So I'm going to take my right needle and I'm going to split my yarn. See how there's a loop? I'm gonna go in between the loop. In between the loop and pick up my other color yarn. Slide the stitch off. In, pick, off. In, pick, off. In, pick, off. And the more you do it, the faster it gets. And that's the knit stitch. Now this is the basic knit stitch with your yarn held in the back 
and you're doing a basic knit. If you need to know how to purl, your yarn is simply brought to the front of the work, not in the back, but the front. And your right needle is gonna go through the loop again, but into the front. Then you're gonna wrap your needle and pull the stitch off. Again, through the front, yarn in the front, needle through the front, wrap, pull it off. And that is a purl stitch. Once you get comfortable using the knit stitch and the purl stitch, it's nothing to go from knitting to purling. Knit, purl. Knit, purl. So today I started working on a hat. Um, this is a pretty randomly inspired project. My daughters and I often read Jan Brett books, and if you haven't had the opportunity to, they're fantastic. They are full of artwork. She has kind of a Norwegian, Finnish type of design about her. But anyway, I found inside of this book, there was a hat, and I just loved it. And I know that the pattern is something I could do. So this hat was actually in gray and green, and while I love the green, I have so many greens, and I have an abundance of red, and we already had the gray wool out when we were talking with Luke on how to knit. So I thought, wouldn't that make, I guess it would be more like this, It wouldn't that make such a neat hat? And I'm knitting the brim in gray, using a Knit One Pearl 2 because I want to fold the cuff up and see more knit stitches once it's folded up. And then I'm gonna do a nice little chart for the crown and then I'll finish it with a white or maybe a gray pom-pom to match this. And this wool is a really nice wool. It's called Dolce Merino. And as I've said before, I love merino wool. It's so soft, it's gonna wear really nice. It's just, talk about a scratchy wool. Luke was saying how he doesn't wanna wear a scratchy wool on his hats, no, but they're so nice. I mean, you could just, it just feels so good. You know, um, but this Dolce Merino, it's just, it's really nicely spun. There are no, my favorite word seems to be slubs, but there are no slubs in this yarn. It just, all of the colors yeah, go nicely together. We don't want no together. slubs, a slub is a get. <laughs> Stop. Sorry. All of their colors seem to blend really well together and they just, they reflect off the light nicely. It's just gonna make a truly fun hat, I believe. I love designing because there's so many possibilities to what you can do. If you, there are programs that you can use on the computer or you can just simply use graph paper. And as long as you know how to hold your needles and what gauge and how to find your measurements, the world is yours. It's just, it's so much fun to knit and so much fun to create. And that's what I'm currently working on, so. All right, so Jamie, for the crocheters out there that might be interested in getting into knitting, there's so many options in terms of needle size and circular needles and straight needles and you know double pointed needles and on and on. So where do you even start? Where should someone look? What should they be interested in learning first? You know, can we get some basic info for that? Sure. Um, well, I guess. It just depends on the person and what they like, and I say that so broadly. I, I can say for sure, I would never ever recommend someone to learn knitting on a chunky wool, mm -hmm. because not only is the wool hard to hold, so are the needles. And you have some thick, heavy duty needles, right? So one of my first projects I actually did, I'll show you a picture of it here. It was a really thick baby blanket for our neighbors, and I loved this material I found. It was like a really thick fleece cord, and it was so soft, and I wanted to knit that blanket. Well, it took a size 17 
needles. So I went out and I found these driftwood <laughs> well, look, needles. Look, it's bigger than my finger. It's so about I the mean... same size, yeah. But it, uh, they're definitely heavy. These are 17s. And I will tell you this, by the end of that project, I kind of remember saying like, ooh, I wish I would have picked a thinner yarn or something like that. So I personally would not recommend you starting a project on a size 17 needle. Yeah, it, and it's hard. It, it's not only is it hard to hold, but your hands start to hurt. The heavier the yarn, the larger the garment, the more your hands are going to start to hurt. Now that being said, I would also not recommend anybody for sanity reasons to pick up a lace weight yarn and immediately start to learn because you're going to feel like you're never getting anywhere. I mean, you could easily knit 400 stitches and only have like a tiny little swatch to show for it. What so, is the most versatile mm. type of needle that if someone were interested in getting into knitting, they could buy a set and that would pretty much let them do any project? You know, I'm thinking a double point wouldn't be a great example because that's very limited on what you can do. Sure. Well, I guess it's a really loaded question, but I guess I would recommend I personally love circular needles. I don't like to knit flat, but if you want to knit, you need to decide what you want to knit first. If you feel like you want to just knock out some dishcloths and some blankets, flat all day long, just, you know, your, your basic straights are always going to be good. But I truly love a circular needle because there's no end to what you can do and you can either just keep knitting in the round or you can knit flat with you know your cords are all attached I just I love a good circular needle there's so many needles there's knit picks there's knitters pride there's Haya Haya there's Chia Goo there's an abundance of knitting needle brands find something that fits your style and your budget but I definitely would recommend a set of circular needles and probably either a lightly worsted or a light DK weight yarn is always good to learn to knit because as you're making mistakes you can see your stitches coming and they're easy to pull out and, and find some flaws. Your yarn isn't weighing your hands down. I really feel like a DK or a worsted weight might be a good place to start. <clears throat> Yeah, and as just a side note, uh, I do recommend Knit Picks needles, not because of any reason, other than you get a large set with every single size. Uh, the quality is really good, but the design is even better. I love yeah. my four square needles. Uh, you know, they have different ones. The Caspian set, this was Majestic. There's, you know, several different designs, but they're great, but they come with everything you need. Um, we've lost parts before. We've called Knit Picks and they've just mailed them to us. Oh, the their customer so, service is fantastic. Yeah. Customer service is good, and you're not going to overpay like what 45 for a whole set yeah. of. And, and we're yeah. these are really good quality. So you spend 45 dollars on a whole set. Um, and you can kind of see in my organizer here. This is not even all of them, but that's most of them. You get some cords, you get some end caps, things like that. Uh, comes in an awesome little clear case. And, and again, if you ever have any trouble, if you break a needle, uh, my mom, what they replaced one for her that she broke. Yeah. Right? So his mom actually gave me a set of beautiful needles. I think she used them for somewhere like six or eight years I got the set and I actually um, the one of one needle it wasn't really broken but the dog had chewed on the tip a little bit so my yarn was kind of catching every time I came up on it and so I had called seeing if I could just purchase the one needle I was willing to pay for it but just to purchase the one needle and she said no worries we really don't like to go back that far but why not here you go and she sent me a whole new set and it was, they're just so nice. They're really nice. I will say though, um, I love knit picks. I also have a set of Haya Haya's. And what's really fantastic about them is the needles are actually hollow. So you feel like you're not holding anything, but the cord has a freely moving. It's got uh, a bearing surface inside of it so it can rotate, yeah, it doesn't bind. Yeah, and nothing catches. I mean, you just, no matter how you want to twist and bend and move, uh, you just, You'll find what feels good, but start 
by looking at the market and just find what's in your budget, I suppose. Yeah, I think a good recommendation, something I did is you could jump right on a site like Nick Nitpicks. The advantage to Nitpicks is they actually knit. So most of the stuff they design, they use. And so if it doesn't work good or it's not practical, they yeah. just get rid of it. It, it works yeah. out really well. Uh, but you could jump on a site like that, find one color of yarn that you like and something like what she's saying, you know, like a DK weight, yeah. uh, get yourself a set of needles and then you'll have every size you need to kind of pick a gauge to start and yep. kind of go to town on a project. Yep. Thanks again for tuning in today. We hope to see you on some future episodes. And as always, if you're looking for any advice or comments or questions, please leave them below. And you can find us on social media. We're on Ravelry, Instagram, Itsy, and YouTube at Spring Stitch Knits. Or you can email me at springstitchknits at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.